spooky friends, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with the Scariest Podcast. Woo! I'm Robin Grace, this is Adam Diaz, and uh, we're here to read you folks some homegrown horrors. Indeed Adam, we are. why don't you go into the details of uh, what those are and stuff. Homegrown horrors are stories, <laughs> really they're emails that you wonderful folks have sent to us. It's something that's either happened to you, a friend, a family member, a loved one, whatever the case may be that's spooky, paranormal, sometimes just coincidental, sometimes true crime, sometimes, as some folks put it, spiritual. Uh, however it is, you want to share it with us. Uh, we appreciate it and we share them on the show once we're given permission from you wonderful folks. Robin, if someone out there had a story like that they'd like to send in, where can they send it? So, if you have any stories of that nature, go ahead and email us, storytime at scariest.com. You can also go to our website, scariest.com. There's a contact us page on there. You fill out that form and it gets to us that way. We also have a whole bunch of different social media outlets you can also reach out to us at. So, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Indeed. So, tonight we have four emails we're going to read too short, too medium to long ones. I've been told they're good by Spooky Mom, who is uh, mending and good enough to do the editing yet again. So shout out to Sam one more time for filling in for Spooky Mom when she was uh, under the weather and recovering. Uh, but we have Spooky Mom back, so shout out to her for, one, always being there for us, and two, uh, hope that she's healing nicely. I mean, we are monitoring her pretty closely, so we know that she's doing pretty pretty well. She's downstairs watching Below Deck Mediterranean right now, which is just like her... What's television like drug of choice so to speak the thing about that show is you sit down and it just pulls you in you're just like this is and so you're just dumb trapped in the drama and you're and like why three did this episodes happen? later you're like i can't believe ben fucked hannah that's crazy what a whore meaning ben not hannah by the way so it's just a it's a weird show but it i enjoy it show. Uh, i think the first email is going to be read by robin this evening so i will turn it over to her all right so this first email here comes from amber uh and it goes like this hey y'all Hey. Hey. Uh, what's funny is I literally have a mug at work that just says, hey, y'all on it. Because why not? Um, that is funny. Yes, I'm back again. But when you read my last email, I flipped out. So here are my next couple of stories for a while. But first question, what's worse? Vanishing voices or a vanishing spider? Voices. Uh, it all depends. Where are the voices coming from? If they're an the unknown source, then I go with vanishing voices. If, if I... It's, if I saw a big spider, though, and it just scurried somewhere and disappeared, I would freak out. A spider is real, you know? So it's like something you could hunt down if you needed to. Plus, like, spiders aren't really all that interested in attacking humans. If it's like a black widow spider, then I'd be a little bit scared. For the most part, they're just there to, like, find a corner to make a web in and eat bugs. What about a brown recluse? Yeah, I wouldn't be okay with that. I'd burn the house <laughs> down. So, yeah, those are my answers for that one. Yeah, I don't know about vanishing voices, because, I mean, someone... I could say something, and then stop saying it. And that's a vanishing voice. And that's voice. a vanishing voice. I could be on an iceberg um, floating away, being like, you're not my guy, buddy! And technically, that's a vanishing voice, too, so... All right. Well, I've experienced both. Every now and then, when I walk downstairs, I'll pass the living room and hear voices as if the TV was on. But when I go into the living room, the TV will be off, and the voices will stop. This happens quite often to me, and though it doesn't scare me as much anymore, it frightened me so much as a child. I think it might just be my stupid brain playing tricks on me and hopefully not ghosts. Um, that is a little strange. Uh, like you, there's a lot of people when they go to certain hotels that are supposedly haunted, it's like, we hear what sounds like a ball or something going, like a party going on in, in this room. And then when they open up the door to the ballroom or whatever, it's empty. Uh, when you said ball, I totally thought you were talking about like a kid bouncing a ball in the hallway no. or something. Um, but I could totally see that being super creepy. Uh, now on to vanishing spiders. One day I saw a spider crawling around on my calendar and decided to grow up and kill it myself. After staring at it for about 10 minutes... That's a long time to just stare at a that spider. That is a long time. Um, I finally grabbed it and crushed it with a tissue. Something in the back of my mind told me something was off about this. I slowly unfolded the tissue and saw absolutely nothing. It was clean. I never saw the spider fall or move as I crushed it, so I have no clue what happened. I always do that. If I, like any bug, say it's a fly or a spider or... Um, I don't know, a silverfish or whatever. If I crush it with a tissue paper or whatever, I always open to check if I got it. Right. Um, that is terrifying. If it was a spider, I would imagine it jumped, you know? I just imagine it's out there plotting my inevitable demise, so. 
Um, jumping spiders freak me out because they jump so fast. Uh, spiders in general. I don't know. Anyway, this was the first, but not the only time that this has happened. Another day, I watched a spider crawl across my wall and onto the frame of a picture in my room. I called my dad in because... Look at this photograph. Because I was still... Uh, fuck... I called my dad in because I was and still am frightened of spiders. He grabs a tissue and I show him where it is. He looks at me and says, I think that's just dust. He goes on and crushes it with his tissue anyway, and sure enough, there was nothing in the tissue. Again, I saw that spider or whatever it was crawling around on the wall. Really hoping this is all a trick of my mind. This has only happened a couple times, but it's still super freaky. Anyway, those are my stories, and I'll hold off on writing for a while. Stay safe and healthy, spooky friends, and happy Pride. Bye. Well, thank you for thank sending you. that in. Yes, you happy Pride indeed. You don't have to hold off on sending in your stories. You can always just send them in. We've had multiple <laughs> people send in stuff, a whole bunch, and all on top of each other, and there's nothing wrong with that. So. Spiders are very weird, because some are very easy to kill, like daddy long legs. It's just, they kind of just dry up and die. You know, have you ever seen that? Like daddy long legs? Where they legs? curl up. Yeah, and yeah. they just die. Um, I mean, and then, that's how they die. I don't know if, like, they're easy to but, kill because of that. But some spiders just are invincible, and you try and get them and smack them with whatever, and they just don't die. I don't know. That's just my theory on the fucking insects and arachnids. Who knows? I think the more terrified um, you are of it, the harder it is to kill it. I understand. I, I can com- see that. I completely understand that spiders are super important to the ecosystem and all those other things, but I'm definitely super scared of spiders. So Yeah. I my biggest fear is stuff crawling into my ear. Yeah, that, she always says that she's afraid it's, of that. It's such a paranoid fear of mine is stuff crawling into my ear like I will um wake up randomly in the middle of the night and just shove my finger in my ear um scratching at it because I think something crawled in there. It, and I've woken up with my ear bleeding before because I've scratched it so hard in the middle of the night. She woke up so viciously scratching her ear like about a week ago. It would like it shocked me awake like are you okay? Like I thought something bit her. And she had a dream that something crawled into her yeah. ear. So <laughs> I was like, oh, totally makes sense now. That's terrifying. Let's go back to sleep. So right on. Thank you so much for sending that in. All right. I'm going to move into my first email of the show. And this one's subject is Spooky Encounters. And it starts out like this. Hello, Adam and Robin. Hello. Hello. Before we get started, I wanted to take a second to say thank you, Spooky Mama, for taking the time out of her day. To get these done and make sure they aren't completely fucked. Big apologies. The L on my keyboard is broken, so if there are typos, it's because of that. My bad. I found your podcast a few weeks ago on Spotify. Shout out Spotify. And I've been binge listening ever since. I'm not sure if you guys still read these, so I'll send it in just in case. I love your pod. It's amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Thank you. so much. Uh, it's cute because um, someone just bought something on Etsy last night and they in the note put like episode 135 some very specific episode uh and was like that's the funniest adam has ever been <laughs> it was super nice to hear it was that really I've, nice like, gotten and funnier as the show went on but I, wrote, I, was... I wrote a little note in there and i was like i'm glad someone thinks we're funny <laughs> it was funny because when i when they said that i was like what fucking did i cover in episode 135 so we had to go look up what i covered and it was the green man episode and i was, was like the oh, grass man or the green man grass man and i was like oh okay I don't remember any of my jokes from the Craftsman episode anymore, but I'm very happy to know that they went over well. I'll have to go back and re-listen to it. Uh, The email continues. You guys have created such a safe space and great ways to connect with many people all over the world. Y'all are killing it. I hope you never quit. I recently went through a breakup with my long-term live-in boyfriend, someone I genuinely thought I'd spend the rest of my life with. Sleeping alone has been hard, so I've had your pod playing while I sleep to fill the silence, and I love it. I'm glad we can be there for you. Yeah, me too. Sorry if this is long. Okay, sorry. Long rant. Let's get into it. I currently live in Utah, or as Robin calls it, Ohio. I put that last part in there. Fuck. I I hate (laughs) you. I thought it was in the email, and I was like, that's never... I'm never going to live it down. I currently live in Utah, and there's a place near Zion National Park called Grafton. I've been to Zion. Uh, There's a ghost town era. This is a ghost town now, but it was the spot where old Western movies like... Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were filmed. Wow. It's an amazing spot to search around and see the history, but the feeling of it changes as soon as the sun goes down. Well, I decided to do a little Scooby-Dooing, as Adam likes to call it. I went with a group of friends and went around to the houses they have that you're allowed to explore. I've always been sensitive to spirits and things my whole life and can usually tell right off the bat if something is bad. To help the skepticism in us all understand parts of this... 
It's the middle of summer, about 90 plus degrees, and there's no wind at all. We go in this particular house and immediately I tell them we need to leave. And they're telling me I'm overreacting and that I'm, quote, chicken shit. So at this point, I'm irritated and accepted the fact that these bitches are going to get what's coming to them. That is hilarious. We walk around the house and I hit a pocket where I'm immediately freezing. I make a comment about it and someone shined a flashlight on my face. My lips were blue. What? They drum this up to my anxiety towards the subject. As we walk around the house, I get this sick feeling in my stomach and I should have just noped the fuck out of there without them, but I wouldn't be sharing this shit if I had. We walked around the main floor and decided to go to the basement. Sorry, Robin. We never actually got to the basement. We started the descent into the pit of hell because, let's face it, that's all that basements are. It's funny because I just literally did a story about the pit of hell or the pit to hell. Yeah. Like, literally today. Anyways, uh, I'm in the back of the group. Oh my gosh, technically it is today because it was like 1 a.m. Yeah, it came out at 4 a.m. I'm in the back of the group so I can dip as soon as anything spooky happens and these bitches can deal. While walking down the stairs, I feel a hot breath on the back of my neck. Starting to think I'm just being paranoid, I tell myself that it's summer and it's probably just the wind. Going down a few more steps, the breath was now on my face. I tell them that we need to stop and leave and they don't listen. When I'm about to take another step, there's a low growling noise in my ear. It's not the sound I've heard any animal make, but the sound a human makes when trying to mimic an animal. I stop and start to back up and in a split second, there's an ear-breaking scream in the house and everyone hauls ass out of there. As soon as everyone's out of the house, the front door slams shut and we weren't able to get back inside. There are no locks on the door, so there isn't any way for it to be locked. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever went to that particular home. Feel free to let me know if you'd like to hear any of my other stories, as I have quite a few. Yes, we'd like to hear all of them. I have a few stories of my dad attempting to kill my mom. In parentheses, Was he possessed? Woof. And an ex-boyfriend of mine trying to kill me in the middle of the woods, as well as a few more paranormal ones. What's with the murderous, right? like, oh intention God. around that? Like, what? I love your podcast, and I'm grateful for the community you guys have sparked up. Please let me know if this will be on the pod so I can make sure to jump ahead and listen to it. I'm interested in hearing what y'all have to say about it. Love you both, and hope things are going so well for you. I sent a couple of pics of my omen baby, Gemini, via Facebook with you as well. Hope you continue to creep it real. Best wishes, Katie. Creep it real is so fucking cute. That is really good. It's so cute. I will say, I think there's a lot of people who are skeptical and they let the skepticism like blind them to the fact that they're not being safe. You know what I mean? Like, there's clearly nothing here. There could be an a actual person in there with a shotgun. You know what I mean? There could be two groups of Scooby Doers going into the same location that are equally on edge and you could accidentally wind up hurting someone else and people don't think about that shit because they're too busy being skeptical of the fact that they don't believe in anything supernatural or paranormal yet they're in a haunted house you know so it's like that sort of idea it's like that's why you bring someone with you who's not skeptical yeah so they can let you know when they're being dumb and then to just ignore that person someone's lucky they didn't get trapped in that house that's all i'm saying because that's like a scene from a horror movie where it's like it's the beginning y'all are kids you run out, you realize Billy's not there, you look around, you see the door slam as yep. Billy's like reaching for it, you just hear screaming, and then Billy never comes back. And then cuts like 15 years later, and it's like, Billy never made it back, and all these kids got blamed for it, and blah, 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 blah. But like, you get what I'm saying. That was some scre- That was some scary shit that could have gone really, really wrong. Yeah. So I'm just saying, listen to your friends that are sensitive. What's scary is the true crime stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear more no about fuck. These attempted murders or these plotted murders or whatever is going on there, you definitely have piqued our interest. Yes. So please send a follow-up email so we can know what the fudge is going on there. Uh, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Robin, anything else to share? No, that's good story. Thank you. Right on. Cool. So before we move into our next email, we're actually going to take a quick commercial break. And we're back. So I'm going to move into my second one of the show because I'm going to read a short one. Then Robin's going to read the last long one and finish us out. This next email subject is Night Marchers, which I'm kind of oh, excited cool. about. Um, I've covered Night Marchers, I believe, in, in one of our episodes. I don't know if we actually covered them or we just spoke about the legend well, of I them. I know uh, we had the special guest episode with... Uh, well, there was Brett, but we also had uh, Mondo. Wow. Oh, yeah, we had Mondo in, yeah. like, episode eight. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Way back then. Yeah, it was a, a 
in the before four times. Wow. It was before story time existed. <laughs> yeah, it was before story time existed. It was a special episode. Um, but I think he also covered Night Marchers a little bit too. Yeah. So we've, we've um, covered them here and there. And I, I'm really excited about this one. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to get past the subject of it. Starts out like this. Yo. 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 Just listen to your podcast on the Hawaiian Night Marchers. I'm oh, from, nice. <laughs> I'm from Maui. And when I was a oh kid, God, we had twinsies. a nuts experience with Night Marchers. We had just moved into a new rental house. And from day one, it felt off. Like not our place to be there. Then, about a weekend, there was a light coming from the living room. I could see it under my door and somebody was announcing some names like a roll call or like a judge reading names. It scared me stupid. After what felt like forever, I got the courage to open my door and look. As I did, the light and names disappeared. It went to the living room and all our shoes from outside were inside the house. That's weird. They had made a path through the living room. It looked like footsteps through the living room. Brah, I was freaked. I would have freaked out, too. I mean, in Hawaii, a lot of people do leave their shoes outside. Right. So the fact that someone made or them something like made them look like footprints throughout the house, creepy. that is very scary. It goes on to say, we called a Hawaiian priest and he came and did a prayer. After that, nothing. But 25 years later, I still remember it like it was yesterday. Thanks for the podcast and the memories. Aloha. Aloha, Aloha. to you. And thank you so much for sending that in. That is short. And fucking terrifying. Like, yeah. that's some shit that is going to give me nightmares. That's like some uh, poltergeist kind of thing yeah. where, like, all the tables and chairs stack up. Um, but, you know, the super cool Hawaiian version. Yeah. In- indeed. <laughs> so, great stories. Anyone else that has Night Marcher stories, we definitely want to hear them. Because yeah. that's one of my, like, favorite things to hear about. Is so. it? Absolutely. Like, a conversation with Mondo when our computers went down is basically when I decided we had to start the, the show Scaryish so I could have a show that I could have him on to tell his ghost stories. Plus, we had already talked about it, yeah. so I was like, we're going to have to fucking do it now. So yeah, Night Marchers, the, all the Hawaiian folklore is just amazing. So send that shit in. Thank you so much. Alrighty, this next email that I'm going to read, the final email of this particular episode, is titled Spooky Sleep Paralysis. And it goes, hi, Robin and Adam. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Amelia, and I love your podcast. For my story, I will be talking about an experience that was shared with me by a family member. I did not personally experience this, but she told me about it, and I thought that it was perfect for Scaryish. Awesome. Thank you for collecting it and sending it our way. Yeah. And thank whoever it was that experienced this for sharing it with you. My family member, let's call her Stephanie, worked at the Martha Berry College Antebellum House for some time. Let it be known that this place has ghosts. It is a touring mansion, so people could come in to view it if they rang the doorbell and were greeted at the door by a tour guide. Stephanie worked at the mansion with her friend. It was a cold, rainy February morning. They decided to sleep in the mansion, which, by the way, is not allowed. How do you get away with that then? What? Uh, Stephanie decided to sleep in the drawing room, which has a big comfy couch in it. From Stephanie's point of view, in the art room, she could see the front door and the foyer, or foyer, people say it differently. Um, right next to that room, she could see a hallway. Her friend slept upstairs. So you're, why would you split up? (laughs) That's like, no. It's another thing where you guys are just inviting bad things to happen to you. I, yeah, in horror movies, you never split up. You don't want to split up. Uh, I'm not really sure what to call this, but I guess I'll say sleep paralysis. It was only a one-time thing. Stephanie doesn't actually have a sleep paralysis condition. Stephanie heard voices. She was confused and a little freaked out because she hadn't let anyone in and she hadn't heard the doorbell ring. There was no possible way that anyone would have gotten in without being let in. Stephanie opened her eyes and looked ahead. In the hallway, she could clearly see children. Children had somehow this is gotten terrifying. Holy shit. Yeah, children had somehow gotten into the mansion and were playing around with a ball. The children did not have modern day clothing. They looked like they had just walked out of a time machine from the late 1800s or early 1900s. They were attired in knickers, trousers, and dresses. I can totally imagine the scene right yeah, now. Yeah, totally seeing it. Uh, too. I see them wearing like the news newsboy caps and and things like that. I don't know what they're actually Playing with called. hoop and stick. Those damn kids. <laughs> The creepiest part was she saw an old woman rocking in a rocking chair right across from her, looking at her. There was no rocking chair in the drawing room before. The old woman didn't look mean or evil. This ghost comes with furniture. That's nice of them. (laughs) 
This old woman didn't look mean or evil. She looked like a kind old grandma. Oh, that's kind of nice. She was attired in the style of the era in which the children were also attired. Stephanie was completely freaked out, and she was trying and trying to get off the couch, but for some reason, it seemed she couldn't get up. This lasted for minutes until her muscles finally set her free. That's super scary that you would see these these kids that, and this woman that obviously don't belong there, this rocking chair that obviously doesn't belong there. But the fact that the children seem to be happy and playing, and then there's this woman there that and doesn't she looks seem, kind yeah, she looks like nice. Evil. It's 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 um, almost like you're like peering. It's good through, energy. It's like you're peering through like I don't know a time slip while you're you know stuck in sleep paralysis, or you're hallucinating because you're in sleep paralysis. Either way, it's terrifying. As soon as she could move again, the children, the woman, and the chair all disappeared. She started running into the foyer, or foyer, and she (laughs) met up with her friend there who had run from the upstairs at the exact same time. Before Stephanie said anything, her friend blurted, I just had the craziest experience. I saw an old woman in a rocking chair looking at me, and I heard kids' voices. I couldn't move. So this, uh, this old woman in the rocking chair... She's powerful. Has has shown up in two different places in the same house. Right. So maybe she's like the old hag, if old hag syndrome. I wouldn't call her old hag if she's nice, though. Just old lady, I think, is fine. Even old is kind of derogatory. Yeah. Seasoned. The seasoned woman. <laughs> With nice salt and pepper. Seasoned woman doesn't have um, such positive connotations now that I come to think of it. Oh Let's just God. move on. Okay. Stephanie hadn't said a word, which meant that they had both had the same experience at the same time. Over the years, Stephanie could not remember every detail of the experience, and she kept trying to make sense of it. After some time, she and the same friend met up and talked about it. Her friend helped her summon back all the memories of the events that occurred that night. Thank you for reading this story. I really hope it ends up on the podcast. Sorry if it was kind of short. To everyone listening, have a great day and a great life. Your podcast is so interesting and intriguing. Amelia. Thank Thank you you so so much, much, Amelia, for sending that in and for getting stories from your friends. That's really cool. Um, this is what we encourage you folks to do. If, even if you haven't had something happen to you, if you have a friend that you know has a story, collect it, send it our way, and then force them to listen to us read it. <laughs> uh, what's funny is I totally feel like I experienced not necessarily sleep paralysis uh, in its entirety, but something like it, like a nightmare that I couldn't necessarily wake up from right away, and it took a while for me to shake out of it. Um, but it was like I was having this dream... And maybe it's because I watched a horror movie earlier that day. Who knows? But um, it was we were going to bed and I turned off the TV. As soon as I turned off the TV, this black smoke or something came out from behind the TV, um, like wispy black smoke came up from behind the TV. And this entity started forming and crawling up the bed and on top of me. And it was freaking me out. And I was trying to wake up so bad and I could not wake up. And I was just freaking out. And before it, like, got close enough, like, to my face where you can start discerning features and stuff like that, uh, I woke up, thank God, and I was just, like, stiff. Like, I... That happens to me sometimes, too. (laughs) I was just, like, laying straight on my back. And I never lay um, just straight on my back. Barely ever. (laughs) Um, I'm usually splayed all over the place, right? She sleeps um, like an asshole. She has <laughs> elbows and knees pointed in the, my direction so that it's like booby traps laid in the bed in case I try and get to my side. So it's it was very so strange painful. for me to have uh, woken up that way, staring straight at the ceiling. Um, it was just so scary. I didn't want to like turn in case I saw anything. I just closed my eyes and just laid there. For I laid there for a while, hoping that it would just go away, you know. And I eventually fell back asleep. But but uh, man, those those types of uh, dreams and stuff like that freak me out. Or nightmares, I guess it's not a dream, but yeah, I mean, nightmares. Technically, that's my a dream. that's my uh, paralysis story to go with this paralysis story. I have not had sleep paralysis since the time I had it, like two years ago, which I did share while we were still on the pod, uh, where I actually saw something for the first time in like. In my life, uh, which I had never seen anything before during sleep paralysis, but uh, it's pretty few and far between that I have it nowadays. Knock on wood, I don't want to say it and then get fucking sleep paralysis tonight, so fingers crossed that does not happen. Thank you for sharing this story, though, and uh, everyone who has friends that have those stories, go collect them and send them our way, and uh, we appreciate that. 
So I want to go ahead and thank everyone who sent in their stories this week. We sincerely appreciate you taking the time out of your day to write up an email of something that happened to you or a friend or family member or whatever and sending it to us so that we could share it. Uh, it means a lot to us that you would do that. And if you have a story you would like to share, please email storytime at scaryish.com or go to our website, scaryish.com, and click on Contact Us. You can also find us on any of the social medias. I think there's some we're missing, but the big ones were there. Facebook is facebook.com slash scaryishpodcast. Twitter is at scaryishpod, and Instagram is at scaryishpodcast. Hit us up on any of those if you would like to send us your story that way. Robin, for folks who would like to donate to us monetarily, how can they do so? You can head on over to patreon.com slash scaryish podcast. There's a whole bunch of different tiers on there. Uh, tiers start at a dollar, and the dollar tier gets you ad-free episodes. Yep. So yep, if yep, you yep. want no ads, head on over there. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, we also have a badge of honor tier and above, and those actually right now, I have some Mothman charms left. Um, so if you guys want to get your hands on the Ma- Mothman charm, uh, I also have Mothman magnets that are going to get sent out a little later as well. Uh, so lots of gifts going out for uh, patrons right now. Yeah, basically the last of those Mothman keychains will go to the most, the newest members who sign up at the Badge of Honor tier yeah. or above. So I know some people have sent us messages like, hey, if I sign up right now, do I still get it? Yeah. Yes, you still get it if it's the Badge of Honor tier or above. You will get that until supplies run out. And yep. uh, we have some left, like Robin said. And then you can go to coffee, ko-fi.com slash scaryish podcast. And those are one-time donations. Uh, all your donations go to helping us upgrade our studio setup, keep us going, uh, keep us motivated to keep making content, uh, and help us actually have more time in our day to make more content for you guys and design new merch and cool stuff like that. So thank you so much uh, to everyone who's donated in the past and will donate in the future. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you to everyone who watches the episodes live and listens to the episodes not live. We love all of you equally. You mean so much to us. The support we get from this is just amazing, and uh, we can never say it enough. I know we say this every episode, but thank you from the bottom of our hearts. So that's just about everything we have for story time number 129, I think it was. So Robin, go ahead and sign us out. Keep on creeping on, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.